Hey guys, uh, welcome to Arcade Hacker. Uh, today I wanted to share with you and, and also show you uh, the programmer that I uh, that I mentioned on my last uh, and final video on the Kabuki series. Uh, this is the uh, the programmer itself that I uh, built uh, using Arduino hardware and uh, basically allows you to uh, reprogram uh, this uh, uh, Kabuki uh, CPUs once they died, and uh, or or actually uh, repurpose it for any other uh, for any other game, and it's it's quite simple. I mean, it's a it's a it's it's a it's a finished product, right? So, and, and let me quickly uh, show you what this is about. So, you can see an Arduino board here, uh, and also an LCD uh, uh, seal screen, and you know cabling that is necessary for. Uh, utilize, utilizing the, the pins that are required to program the uh, the CPU as well as uh, as the voltages right here. And um, personally, um, I'm using a uh, a clip. So this is a an IC uh, clip that allows you to uh, basically tap this way on top of any uh, any Deep Forty uh, type uh, uh, chip and Sometimes uh, the operation is uh, is quite simple. And let me let me power this this up. Uh, it's powered via USB. But let me power it up so you can see uh, how easy and you know seamless this is really it once that is a final product like this. And and here um, you are being presented. You can see a, a menu and it's asking us to press down. And if we press down, we can see uh, a bunch of games here. You can go through the list, and most of the, if not all of the, uh, Kabuki power games that um, are known to exist are uh, listed here. So we can program uh, them all. And for example, we can select Pang. And if I do this, obviously there's nothing connected, but the thing is going to go through it. It's doing all of the different stages that I shared with you in my previous video, and doing the programming of the uh, CPU or the reprogramming. Once this uh, is done, as you can see, it's asking us to insert the uh, Kabuki CPU back to the uh, motherboard uh, socket. And that's actually it. I mean, uh, it's as simple as it gets. And uh, now that I'm uh, looking at this, I also wanted to uh, uh, clarify why is it necessary for uh, the reprogramming to happen outside of the board? And let me let me show you uh, the real board. This is Capcom's uh, Block Block. Uh, it's one of those uh, uh, games powered by by Kabuki right here. This card is this is just an adapter that I have here on this ROM because I didn't have the right type, so I, I had to make this uh, small adapter. So. Uh, uh, this is the Kabuki uh, CPU, and what happens is, uh, if you try to program this on the board effectively, you will be also powering through pin 11 and probably through uh, pin 28 other components on the board. And what you're doing essentially is firing up, you know, ICs on the board that essentially interfere with your uh, with your programming processing, and you know that's why. You can't reprogram Kabuki CPUs on the motherboard. It's not any limitation. It has nothing to do with the technique. It's plain and simple the way it is. And if you notice, all, absolutely all Kabuki CPUs are in the socket. And I have no doubts whatsoever that uh, during manufacturing process, this is how they did it. And essentially, it's because of what I just told you. You will power up other ICs in the board by supplying the voltages required for Kabuki to be reprogrammed. So. Um, let me uh, perhaps show you uh, this baby in in action. So uh, let me disconnect the uh, uh, the programmer, and I'm gonna fire up uh, this game so you can see that it's uh, live. There's a new battery here. This is a dead board that I bought um, a while ago, uh, and it came suicide, obviously. And it's holding a new battery, and this is ha this has been reprogrammed. Uh, Using the uh, Kabuki uh, programmer that I did, and I'm gonna quickly fire this up so you can see that it is uh, that it is working. And in a few seconds, we should see this thing coming up. We'll see block block. It's a vertical game, so you're gonna see it sideways. And you know, this is, this is essentially uh, working. It's uh, this game is a sort of a arcanoid. Uh, 
uh, version of the game. It's fun actually. It's uh, it's got loads of uh, effects and 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 funny game modes. So uh, it's a it's a nice game. Actually, uh, very uh, uh, cost effective. Uh, you know what I mean? It's it's a game that is not very much overpriced. And you know, I'm saying it's it's quite fun. So Kabuki, right here. What I'm gonna do right now is power off the game and. If I'm able to successfully do this, I'm gonna uh, get the game to basically switch. I'm looking for my screwdriver. And sorry, uh, but this is my first uh, handheld video. And I'm gonna try to disconnect Kabuki from the uh, from the motherboard using one hand. So let me quickly do this. There we go. Just coming out. And okay, so the, the CPU is outside of the socket now. So essentially, as you know, this is now suicide, and I'm gonna put it back so uh, so you guys also see what happens when this game suicides. So it's back in. It's lost the battery while I was holding it on my hand, and it's essentially lost uh, the the battery uh, power contents inside of the uh, registers in in the CPU. So there we go. I'm gonna power this up. And now the game should welcome us with a plain color screen indicating Tang game is gone. There you go. Bye bye game. It's suicide. So off we go. And we gotta get this back off from the socket. There we go. And I'm gonna leave here for now. What I'm gonna do now, it's again, sorry that I'm doing this with the one hand, but it's basically put a uh, book inside of the socket. And sorry, but I'm gonna have to put the phone down. Let me quickly uh, do it here and I show you exactly how uh, this it's fitted. There you go. So we can see now that I have the Kabuki processor inside of the uh, shocker. It's right there. Let me actually align a bit better. There you go. And all of the contacts are basically in place. And I'm gonna power the program. So let me do this real quick. We power it via USB. So it's very easy to uh, basically plug in. This is now turning on, and I'm gonna go search for uh, block block. Let me see where this game is at. Block block, there you go, right? So now I'm gonna ask the programmer to basically write the uh, configuration contents to Kabuki. So it's preparing, door knocking, unlocking, programming. done and now it's asking us to uh, insert Kabuki back to the CPU and now this is the say critical part in where if you remember you get to uh, maintain this thing alive because what this is doing right now is keeping uh, the, the battery contents sorry the, the memory contents uh, alive and while it's doing this for us we need to transfer Kabuki back to the socket and it's it's a very easy process I mean all you gotta do is basically make sure that you are Bring it down correctly. So let me do this. And personally, what I do is I press on one of the sides and then I do the other side. Sorry. I only have one hand. And that should be really it. The battery is inside. This is now into the socket. And I'm gonna remove the clip. Make sure that the CPU is firmly down. It's looking good. All of the pins are inside. And let's now power up the game. If everything went correctly, this should fire up now, and the fully uh, the game is fully back alive. There you go. So now our game is back to life. The reprogramming worked. And we now have a fresh uh, game 
back alive using the uh, Kabuki uh, reprogrammer. So guys, uh, I hope you uh, you like uh, this video on the programmer. I'm gonna be uh, submitting uh, several copies of this uh, programmer on several arcade uh, forums in case you guys wanna want to get hold of, of, of one and it will allow you to reprogram um, many of the uh, Kabuki powered games including um, all of the CPS 1.5 games such as Cadillacs and Dinosaurs and so on. So guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy this uh, video. Bye bye.